Hello, my name is Ray Jackson from 8-Bit Digital TV. Today's tutorial is how to do the Predator decloaking featured in our improv skit entitled It's Predator Time. Since this tutorial is covering the transition between the Predator being cloaked and not being cloaked, be sure to check out part one of this effect entitled Predator Cloaking or Invisibility. First thing we're going to talk about is setting up the shot. Since this clip is actually showing the actor, which was filmed separately from the background, it's important to match lighting as best as possible to sell the effect of the actor actually being there. In order to do this, we kept the tripod at the same angle and ran over to an area without all the trees in the background, had Luke face the same direction as the shot was originally, and then rotobrushed out the background. If you have a portable green screen, you could set up your camera on a tripod, put up your green screen, film your actor doing the scene, and then remove the green screen to get your background shot. Since the actor layer was filmed separately from the background layer and is actually going to be shown in this clip, we need to do some color correction so that it looks like the actor was actually there. At the end of the previous tutorial, we added some contrast to the actor layer to make the effect pop more. We locked the preview pane so we could see its effect in the final result, so go ahead and unlock that. Whoa! He is one ugly... Um, never mind. We need to fix up the actor footage, but we don't want to mess up the effect or lose our scaling and positioning. So click on the actor layer in the project pane and press Ctrl or Command D, or choose Edit from the menu bar and click Duplicate. Right-click the new Actor 2 layer, click Rename, type in Actor Visible, and press Enter. Double-click the new Actor Visible layer to open it. Down in the Timeline pane, click the Keyed Actor layer. Remove the Brightness and Contrast effect from the layer by clicking on it and pressing Delete. He's back to normal now, so click over to the Cloaked layer. From the project pane, drag down the new actor visible layer onto the top of the timeline. Since we matched the lighting, a few minor tweaks should have us good to go. Your footage will probably be different, but the first thing I notice is that he's a bit too light compared to the background. The easiest way to fix that is using levels. So in the effects and presets pane, type levels. Drop the levels effect down onto the actor visible layer. In the effect controls pane, you can either use the arrows on the histogram or set the values below. Input black, or the leftmost arrow on the top diagram, darkens the shadows, or crushes the blacks as they call it sometimes. I'm going to set mine to about 8. Input white, or the rightmost arrow, brightens the highlights. I'm going to just leave mine at 255. Gamma, the middle arrow, controls the overall brightness and darkness. I'm going to set mine to 0.8. Now it looks like he's a bit too colorful or saturated, partially caused by darkening the footage. So in the effects and presets pane, type saturation. Drop the hue and saturation effect onto the layer. Knock down the master saturation to negative 20. Now it pretty well looks like he's standing there as compared to before. Next thing we're going to do is a simple fade. The heart of this effect is to go from showing the cloaked effect to showing the regular actor. The easiest way to do this is to fade from one to the other. Highlight the actor visible layer and press T to bring up the opacity. T is for transparency. Alternatively, you could click the layer expansion arrow for the layer and look for opacity under the transform section. Go ahead and set the opacity to 0%. To me, the transition seemed best around half a second. I'm going to set mine to 112. And click the stopwatch for the opacity. Move over about half a second. I'm going to move over to 201. And set the opacity to 100%, which automatically sets another keyframe. This makes it transition from invisible to fully visible over about half a second. Bring in your work area markers just outside the transition and click Ramp Preview. Simple, but effective. Now if you look closely at the movies, you'll notice that they don't just fade the Predator in or out. It kind of happens in random chunks. We didn't do this for our skit, but it gives it a much more organic feel. Create a new color solid by clicking Layer from the menu bar up top, New, and Solid. Or you could just click Control y Set the name to Fractal Fade. You may have to click the Make Comp Size button to make it the same size as your composition. Click on the color swatch and drop it to black, which is the bottom left corner, which sets everything to zero. Click OK, and click OK again. Under the Effects and Presets pane, type in Fractal. Drop the Fractal Noise effect onto your Fractal Fade layer. Click over to the start of the transition. Click the stopwatch for evolution. Click over to the end of the transition and set the evolution rotation to 1 and then ramp preview it. This has a good globby randomness to it, but in order to make it a transition, we need to do some more work. Under the effects and presets pane, type in levels. Drop the levels effect onto the layer. 
Go to the beginning of the transition, click the histogram stopwatch, and set output black to 255, which makes it all black. Go to the midpoint and set the output black back to zero. This fades from black back to normal. Go to the end point and set the output white to zero. This makes it fade from normal to white. Since we're doing it this way, we don't need the simple fade anymore, so click the stopwatch for the opacity to remove the keyframes. Set the opacity to 100% if it isn't already. For the final touch, let's spice it up a bit. CC effects are third-party plugins available on the installation CD as a separate install, but you can skip this step if you don't have them installed. Click over to the midpoint of the transition so we can see it. Under the Effects and Presets pane, type in Vector. Drop the CC Vector Blur onto the layer. Set the amount to somewhere around 7. Well, that's great and all, but we need it to be a transition, not globby randomness. Pre-comp the Fractal Fade layer by pressing Ctrl or Command, Shift, and C. Call the new comp Fractal Fade. Move all attributes should be checked. Uncheck Open New Comp if it is checked. Now click OK. Hide the Fractal Fade layer by clicking the eyeball icon because we want to use it, not see it. Now we need to apply it to the actor layer, so go under the Effects and Presets pane and type in Matte. Drop the Set Matte effect onto the actor visible layer. Set Take Matte from Layer to Fractal Fade. Set Use for Matte to Luminance, which is the lightness or darkness of the layer, which is why we faded from black to normal to white. Let's RAM preview that without the background so you can see it better. And then again with the background, so you can see it in its final result. If you watch the Predator movies, they throw on some lightning to make the transition more interesting. I'll walk you through one and let you handle the rest. Create a new color solid by clicking layer from the menu bar up top, then new, then solid, or you could hit Ctrl Y. Set the name to Lightning Head. It should still be the comp size in black, so just click OK. Drag in the layer starting point to the beginning of the transition and then again to the end of the layer on the timeline. You may need to extend your work area a bit. In the Effects and Presets pane, type Lightning. Drop the Advanced Lightning effect onto the Lightning Head layer. Set the Lightning type to Breaking, which Breaking is from point A through point B. Strike, which we use for the shoulders, is from point A to point B. Click the target for Origin and choose a place near the top of the actor's head on the left side. And click the target for Direction and choose a place near the actor's head on the right side but don't make it level with the origin. And set turbulence to 1.33. This makes it a little bit more random and bigger. Now click over to the beginning of the layer in the timeline. Click the stopwatch for origin and direction so we can keyframe and animate them. Click over to the end of the layer on the timeline. Click the target for the origin and choose a place on the left side of the chest. Click the target for the destination and choose a spot where the head meets the neck on the right side. We want to limit the effect to be just on the actor, so under the Effects and Presets pane, type in Matte. Drop the Set Matte effect on the layer. Set Take Matte from Layer to Actor Visible. Now we just need to fade out the effect. Click over to two frames before the layer ends. Press T to bring up the opacity. Click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Click over to where the layer ends and set the opacity to zero. That's it for the first bolt, so let's RAM preview that. I found that our transition needed about three different sets of bolts. One coming down from the head, one coming down from the shoulders, and one coming up from the waist, just to kind of keep it random. I also made them start and end at different times and go different speeds. This gives it more of a natural feel, but takes a little longer. Our shoulder bolt was a strike that was started from the shoulder and neck area and went down to the elbows, or the bottom of the ribs. The waist bolt was a breaking bolt that went from the bottom of the frame up to the mid waist and rib line. Bodies aren't straight lines, so you may need to add some extra keyframes in by clicking the area that needs it and adjusting the values. So I'm going to show you the final result. If you found this tutorial helpful, help us out by rating it and leaving comments. If this tutorial helps you with one of your videos, make it a video response to this or at least send us a link because we'd love to see it. Don't forget to check out our improv skit entitled It's Predator Time and subscribe to 8-Bit Digital TV for new tutorial skits and more. Thanks for watching and be sure to stick around. Ah!